So I know a lot of people like to jump on this idea that what you learn in college isn't nearly as important than what you're going to learn once you actually get on the job in industry. But today I'm hoping to give a little bit more of a nuanced explanation of some of the different things that I learned over the past year as a software engineer and how college kind of played into those things and in other cases really just didn't help at all. So I probably mentioned this by now in other videos, but the way that I wrote code in college is drastically different than the way that I write my code now. And this can really be boiled down to a couple main things, whether it be testing, maintainability, or reliability. Back when I was in college, or heck, even in high school, most of the things were pretty small scale and were designed to serve one specific purpose, to be used in a certain way for either a homework assignment or some sort of group project, and then to be thrown away and never used again. But all that changes as soon as you go into industry. First off, it's going to be really important that the code you write actually works, which is where automated testing becomes huge. Instead of just throwing a couple manual test cases at something, writing something that's going to continually exercise the same set of test cases and edge cases is going to make your life a lot easier and just generally make sure you put less bugs into production. In college, I also really didn't have any experience working on larger code bases with more complicated code. So I've gotten exposed to a lot more software design patterns and just generally have focused a lot on writing cleaner code than probably anything I ever wrote while I was in college. And of course, this is going to vary from team to team or company to company. The way that I write code now is undoubtedly miles better than anything I wrote in college, but if I switched to another team or another company someday, I don't doubt that my coding style would have to change again so that it would fit in correctly with the other members of that team. One of the big things that I quickly had to get used to was this idea of people constantly looking at and critiquing your code and vice versa. Generally speaking, most of the stuff that I was writing in college was as an independent contributor, which meant that the code that I wrote wasn't being reviewed by anyone else and I wasn't collaborating with anyone. I just wrote my code, made sure that the product worked, and that was my whole project or internship. But when I started as a full-time, that was really my first experience with pushing code to a shared code base, which also meant that I would have to do pull requests, which means other people looking through your code. Admittedly, this can be a little bit stressful, especially when you're the junior developer and everyone else on your team has a lot more experience than you, but if you're able to take the criticism and the feedback the right way, you can very quickly develop and realize all of the mistakes that you're making and just develop so much faster than you would if you were working in isolation. Now, naturally, it's going to be tough in the beginning to thoroughly review other people's code, especially when it's way beyond your skill level, but if you're willing to take the time and really pour over it, you can not only learn a lot about different coding conventions and how to make your own code better, but also start looking at some of the larger architectural decisions to see why people are designing their code in such a way and what patterns they're using. And this was something that was really different than in college because even when we worked on group projects in my sophomore or junior year, everyone was kind of on the same general skill level, which meant if we looked at each other's code, we weren't really gaining any valuable insights from 10 or 15 or 20 years of experience in industry. And if you're lucky and you have a good culture on your team and you have nice teammates, you could start to sort of look for a mentor or just someone who's willing to actively work with you to make you a better software developer. Of course, you can still really learn a lot just by having other people reading through your code and leaving comments on the pull requests or by you just going through their code line by line and trying to understand why they made the decisions that they did, but having someone that you can kind of bounce questions off of and just have more of a dialogue with is going to really speed up that process and is going to get you past your misconceptions just a little bit quicker. Depending on the job you get straight out of school, there's a chance that you get something that aligns perfectly with all the skills that you learned while you were in college and is just highly specialized and tailored to the specific things that you're bringing to the table. But there's a much larger chance that you're getting hired into something where you're not going to know all the technologies or languages or just other tools that you're going to need as part of the job, and that's totally okay. The reality is that most colleges do a pretty good job of giving everyone a certain baseline level of skills in a generalized environment while also letting people go a little bit in depth in the areas that they care about. Which means if you're lucky, you'll get hired into one of those areas working on the things that you're passionate about. But even if you don't, that's really not too big of a deal. Even if you end up in a more specialized part of the field though, that aligns really well with your interests, there's a pretty strong chance that you're going to end up using some tools or languages that you've just never touched before. For example, in my current job, I use a lot of C Sharp, which I had used a little bit in prior internships and just in my own life. But there's other tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis that I had pretty much never touched before the first day of my job. Now, naturally coming in with some experience is going to make your life easier from day one if you know how to write in the language that you got hired to do work in or just with a set of tools that you're going to be using, you are going to be able to ramp up faster than someone who's starting from scratch. 
But the difference here between this and something like an internship or a college course is that when you're full-time, you're playing the long game. And what I mean by this is when your timeline is only three or four months, that head start is really important. If you can get off the ground quickly when you're doing an internship, it could make the difference between you getting and not getting that return offer. But when you're full-time and you're probably gonna be working at that company for years, that first couple of months, it's much more important to focus on building a solid foundation than just being expected to come in with all the skills that you think you're ever going to need. Because the reality is, as a software engineer, it's really important to be able to pick up new skills and languages and technologies, which means it's much more important that you build that skill and actually learn how to do that than just to always expect that you're going to come in with everything you're ever going to need to know. When I first graduated from college, I was worried about slipping into what I'll call the intern mindset, which is essentially this idea that after three months, I was going to be ready to return to being a student and just kind of tapped out of doing my job and was just gonna start feeling like this never ending thing because that was my only experience actually working in industry up to that point. You you know, I have your 12 week window, the first couple of weeks is getting ramped up, the last week or two is your final presentation and you have a nice little project that you can kind of wrap up in an eight week span and then you call it quits and you go back to college. And the reality is I did fall into the intern mindset. Probably two and a half months into my job, I was already thinking about kind of how I was wrapping things up and I was gonna be going back to school and then I had to remind myself that I wasn't wrapping anything up and I wasn't ever going back to school because I had graduated. It probably wasn't until that four or five month mark when school was fully underway and I was not taking part in it that it really became clear to me that I was not an intern anymore, I was a full-time, and I was also just doing completely different work than I had done back when I was an intern. The work and the interactions I was having on a day-to-day -day basis were completely different than the ones that I'd had when I was an intern, and I also started taking on leadership roles within my team that you normally just don't have as an intern. And of course, there's also just an integration aspect of this. When you're an intern, by the time you really start to get to know your teammates and stuff, you're already kind of on your way out and you never get too close to them. Once I was a full-time, I just kept spending more and more time with these people, getting to know them better, working with them more, to the point where I really started to feel integrated, probably around that four or five month mark. And I realized, you know, I'm one of these people's coworkers, I'm not just that intern who's here for a couple months and then they disappear. Naturally, I would say that the quicker you can get out of the intern mindset, the better it's gonna help you feel more settled and like you're really a part of the team, but at the same time, it's not really something that you can rush. The last thing that I really wanna talk about is how many mistakes you're going to make as a full-time and why that's totally okay and actually is a good thing. First off, just getting the obvious out of the way, you are going to make mistakes, even if it's just small bugs, you do hope that it's not something that's going to be huge and costly and hopefully isn't going to lose you your job, but it's pretty much inevitable. First off, most important thing is you need to own up to the mistakes that you made and not try to make it look like it was someone else's problem or you didn't make a mistake and it was just some sort of misunderstanding. Recognize that you made a mistake. And then second, try to understand why you made the mistake and where it came from. In a lot of cases, this will probably be something pretty insignificant. Maybe you made a typo or it's just a slight misunderstanding of the syntax of the language. But in other cases, this is going to be a huge learning opportunity to understand something that you really completely overlooked before that you hopefully won't make that mistake again. And these are the mistakes that are really important because if you're not making these kinds of mistakes, then you're probably not being pushed enough. For example, if the only things you're working on are really small features and bug fixes, then you probably aren't going to be making huge mistakes. You might technically introduce other bugs when you fix another one, but there shouldn't be anything in there that's that crazy. However, once you start stretching a little bit outside of your comfort zone, like actually doing design work for the first time or taking on larger features, where you actually have to start making some of your own decisions, that's when you're gonna start making some of the bigger mistakes that have either larger consequences or just are bigger opportunities for learning. Now, obviously it's important to consider the consequences of one of these mistakes. You don't wanna be pushing these things into production in a critical system or wasting six months of your life working on an architecture without asking anyone for their input that just isn't going to work. But at least in my own experience, it generally just means having to do some code over again after putting it through reviews or just any other small thing that maybe chews up a couple of days of my life. If you only ever play it safe, then you're probably not gonna be making that many mistakes, which means you're not going to be growing nearly as much as you could be. But it's also really important to recognize when you need to ask for help or get a second opinion, or you're just way at your depth on something really important. I know it's been a little while since I came out with any videos like this, so if you wanna see more stuff like this, let me know down in the comments, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.